Hi, my name is Mike, and I'm one of the pastors here at Kings Harbor. Thank you so much for joining us for this online message. Here's our hope that as you hear the word of God preached, that you would see Jesus more clearly and love him more deeply. And so over the next few moments, take notes, focus, and hear how the word of God is going to transform you. First Corinthians 2, something, somebody asked me, how are you doing today? And I said, this is this verse right here. It says, um, and, and I, when I came to your brother, did not proclaim to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. So I'm not coming today with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. We started the, the message today with worship about Jesus. And I, and I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So I was just thinking about that. I come today with um, fear and trembling. Like, this is an important thing that I'm doing. And it was funny, this morning, I got up this morning, yesterday, um, I was finishing a, a, a fence with a friend of mine who did most of the work. I was just his assistant. But I had a, a wasp nest in a light fixture. And I said, I got to get rid of that thing. So today, at about six o'clock, he said, do it before they wake up. I got that long spray can, and I'm fear and trembling, getting ready to run, right? And I'm shooting that wasp nest and, and killed everything. So it kind of relates to today, right? Like, I, I was like, please make this go well, right? <laughs> and, and it did. So let us pick up here. Um, we're in this story about surviving exile in Daniel. We're going to pick up in Daniel 6. A lot of you have probably read this story many times, have heard it, but maybe today, as I pray for the Holy Spirit to come across this place, that the word would come forward in a way that you would receive it. And I, I'll just pray that. Lord, I pray now for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would anoint this word, you would anoint this crowd of people, that God, as we come before you humbly, with fear and trembling, but also knowing the grace that comes from you from above, that we are so blessed, Lord. So I pray that you would go before us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this surviving exile, I'm kind of a word guy, so I think about exile. What does that word mean? And uh, this survival, I'm kind of an outdoor guy, so I want to survive. I hope you guys want to survive this message as well. But uh, surviving exile, it says a state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political or punitive reasons. Some synonyms, separation, eviction, expulsion, banishment. The state of being separated from one's home, our final home in heaven. So we today are living in exile. For those that know Jesus Christ and know that we're going to heaven, today we live in this land in exile. We don't face the same things that Daniel does in, in, in the South Bay for the most part. But we are living in exile and our focus should be on where are we going? What is our hope for tomorrow? That we know now, but not yet to come, right? That we live in this, this time of exile. And um, I wanted to just talk real quickly about uh, this quote. You can put it up there for me. About Jonathan Edwards. Resolution one, I will live for God. Resolution two, if no one else does, I still will. If nobody else follows God, I'm gonna do it. I want that to be who I am. No matter what, I'm gonna follow after God. I think about Jonathan Edwards. I, I'm a history major so I think about him and, and find out a little bit about him. Some of you know a lot more about him. But he was the father of the Great Awakening in the 1700s, they called him. He went to Yale at 13 years of age. 13 years old, he's at Yale. At 21, he was actually leading Yale. He was kind of like the, the leading professor. And somebody who spent 13 hours a day studying. Somebody that was very devoted and through that, you see that he learned how that he was going to live for God. 
This kind of reminds me of a story about me a little bit. Not, this is going to be a funny story, not that I study for 13 hours a day, but I'm kind of a serious person. Uh, when I get my mind set on something, uh, sort of like my dad was very serious, calm, but serious, put his mind to something, he's going to do it, all right? So I remember us, um, every year we'd go on this camping trip to uh, Three Rivers. Some of you guys know that up by the Sequoias. And uh, I, I decided, because I knew for that week, I probably was going to be eating a lot of food, maybe not good food. So I decided that for 100 days, I wasn't going to eat any sweets. No sweets until that time. And some of you know I have a, a baker in my house, and it's very difficult to not eat sweets in my house. But I committed to doing that. So then when I got there, I committed to also to going to the local ice cream shop for a week because I was very committed every day to have that ice cream, sometimes two times a day, sometimes actually three times a day. I was very committed to that. But like Jonathan Edwards, no matter what, if no one else does, as we get into Daniel 6 and we start looking about the things that he had done in there, I want to be more like him. Amen. This week I committed, I, I sent out a text saying, hey, where am I at in my prayer life today? And I said, you know, I think I can grow in that area. I think we all can grow in that area. And I said, just like Daniel, I want to pray three times a day. Amen. I'm going to pray when I wake up. I'm going to pray in midday. I'm going to pray bef- at, before I go to bed at nighttime. And I, no matter what, I want to be a guy that is that no matter what guy. No matter what happens, I'm going to trust God and I'm going to pray to God about that. And we're going to see in Daniel here um, just how he was that guy. He's somebody that we could look to, but we also know the perfect guy in Jesus. So throughout today, I'd like to think about some of these corollaries, some of these things that are happening in Daniel 6, this prophet of God, is kind of a, you can see these common themes that come through with Daniel. So if you're um, following us along, I'm going to give us the main idea here. We can look to God and trust him for strength and guidance in situations that are beyond our control. We need to look to God for his strength. Four quick points we're going to go through. I got 28 verses, so I'm going to be reading. You can follow along with me if you're online or here. Uh, we'll be in Daniel 6. We'll be doing the whole chapter. First, we're going to talk about the plan to trap Daniel. Then we're going to talk about hop on God's plan. How do we hop on his plan? God's faithfulness to his plan in 19 to 24 and the king's reward in verses 25 through 28. Last week, Mike did a great job. I want to bring us up if you weren't here last week. We were in Daniel 5. God gave Daniel um, this message to King Belshazzar. You can see in Daniel, there's a lot of kings, not kings that we really want to follow. Last week, um, the the writing was on the wall, right, about this king. It said, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting, and your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So Belshazzar, basically, that night, after Daniel interprets what's that writing on the wall as he dies. And that brings us to Daniel 6, where we land with another king, King Darius. If you're following on our app, the first note, so if you're, you're an app person, you can, uh, it says, what happens when we exalt ourselves above those we are to show mercy? We're going to read through uh, verses 1 through 9. Follow along with me. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom and over them three high officials of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps should give account so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error of fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel 
unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom, the prefects, the satraps, the counselors, the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any God or man for 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. So here we have, we, we drop into Daniel 6. We see that there's 120 satraps, let's call them Congress people, people who rule the land, um, they're in charge of this. Darius is now taken over this kingdom. And there's three high officials, kind of, let's call them three vice presidents or three people over this whole kingdom. And one of them is Daniel. And uh, it says that he should not give account so that the king might suffer no loss. So all these people are kind of around to make sure that, hey, this kingdom stays in order, right? They're over these different areas. They need to make sure that, hey, the kingdom is not being other people aren't coming to try to destroy the kingdom. This first part, uh, I think about it. This is um, Daniel and the trap, right? So I think about, it's a trap. Admiral Akbar, Star Wars, right? It's a trap, right? These say traps, their names kind of was a hint, right? Trap. These guys are coming together. They don't like that... Um, Daniel is going to be distinguished above all of them, right? He's going to be the guy. There's 120 of them. They're going to, they're like, hey, this guy, we need to get rid of him, right? So Daniel, let's look at Daniel in verse um, three. Some of these things that I want to think about, how can I be more like Daniel? Then this Daniel became distinguished above all other high officials and satraps because of an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit. Where do we think that spirit came from? The spirit of God. The spirit of God that was in him and is in us. That excellent spirit that he relied upon. That everybody else, Non-believers, wherever he went, 120 all over the kingdom knew that this man had an excellent spirit. Yeah. But not one of them would stand up and say, hey, wait a second. Not one of them. How can it be excellent unless it's from God? He relied upon the spirit of God to help him in all circumstances. Amen. We need to have that excellent spirit. What else does it say about in verse four? No ground for complaint or fault. Wow. I had some faults just coming here, right? To church today. Throughout this week. But they can't find any of them. All of them are watching him very closely and they still can't find complaint or fault. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven. It says, he who has knowledge spares his words and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Sparing my words. We see Daniel as we get farther in. Like, does he go before? What does he do? We'll get, we'll get that in, in just a minute. The, the only thing they knew that they could get him on was the law of God. So we know that these guys are not believers of God in the way that they are gonna say, this is the only thing that we can do. If we catch him in the law of God, that's the only way we're going to get rid of him. I like this question here um, where it says, O King Darius, live forever. So here comes these guys up to the king, start pumping him up a little bit. O King Darius, how many times do we go to somebody when we want something? Oh, mom, you're so wonderful. You bake the best cookies. You give me my allowance in advance. Puffing him up, right? And then it says all. All 
the high officials, the first little twist, all. I like when the Bible says all, we read it as all. That's just me. This isn't all. Do you think Daniel is part of the all? He's not. He's not part of the all. All of them have come. And they even add, so they said counselors, governors, everybody says that we're agreed that we should establish this ordinance that for 30 days will make you God, Darius. I thought about that. 30 days? Why 30 days? Maybe he wasn't that big of a king. Maybe it was like, hey, 30 days, we know we can get Daniel because we know on the first day he's going to be uh, praying to God. But 30 days and that it cannot be changed. We can see here that this little lie, this little turn, this little trap, right? And Darius has this moment. Like, as we think about Daniel, Daniel, right, he was Babylonian in exile. Now he's in Medes and Persians, right? So it's like a new group. Come. It's not the Babylonians anymore, but yet he's risen to this power with this new group of people. Like he's had to spend some time with Darius, with the people. People are still wanting to fall, know that he is righteous. He's yeah. perfect in the ways of, that wor- of the world, not perfect in all ways. But Darius has this moment and we have this moment. Sometimes something will be just turned just a little bit and we don't question it. We, we go along with the ride. We go along with everybody else. What if one person, what if Darius would have said, did Daniel say this? But in his exalting of himself, of saying, I can become a God, right. I like this idea, is what Darius says. He's going to get what he wants versus looking to what could be for him in this kingdom. Let's move on to hopping on God's plan. In verses 10 through 8, so the second note, you can see Daniel seeks God for help in humility, humility, H, obedience, O, and prayer in the face of death. That's on our app there. So hopping on God's plan. These three words are things that I want myself to be known for. No matter what, I want people to know that I have humility, I have obedience, and I'm rooted in prayer. So let's look on God's plan for for Daniel here and for us. It says, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house, where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king, Concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The king stands fast according to the law of Medes and Persians, which cannot be be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you. O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded And Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him and sleep fled from him. You can see here the king, here we go, our, our trap, trapeze guys are making sure that that trap is set 
and that it happens. And then what does Darius do? He starts to have this regret. I think about buyer's remorse. Sometimes we get into something, we're like, yeah, this is it. And then we kind of walk it back a little bit. I'm in the car business, so I know about that a little bit. Like, did I really need that? Is that what I really said I committed to, right? But let's look at in the first few verses here. What does Daniel do? He goes to his house. A sign of humility is, so this guy is pretty powerful in the kingdom, right? Let, let's just say he's the top guy, right? He's gonna, ex, he's gonna execute whatever the king says, right? He gets this thing that he knows that the document's been signed. And what does he do? He goes to his house. He doesn't go to the marketplace and say, hey, he doesn't go to the king and beg before him. He goes to his house. He postures himself in humility. He goes and he prays. I like that he got down on his knees, a sign of humility, of posturing herself. He gave thanks before God as he had done previously. Previously, meaning this is how he prays every day. No matter what circumstance happens, no matter what situation happens, I'm praying. I'm praying three days. I'm gonna be steadfast in praying. This week in a devotion, this guy, um, it's interesting when you start talking about prayer, your phone kind of hears you, right? And then the devotion comes up on prayer. And then you're, you, know, you see all these things. And it was just about praying continually. And this guy talked about this time where his aunt was sick with cancer. And I know that's a very sensitive topic. I know how that feels. And he said, I prayed more than I'd ever prayed before. I spent time just giving petitions to God, hoping and praying that God would enter in. So he was going above and beyond. Like just, this is, I think in certain situations, when we come against tough things, that's when we really pray. But we see Daniel, does, he prays continually. He prays consistently, regardless of the situations. This guy said, my aunt went to be with the Lord. And it was really difficult. But as I came out of that, I learned that God was with me even though it didn't answer the prayer that I wanted in that circumstance, I knew that he was with me that entire time and I grew closer to him. I trusted him more in that circumstance. This humility, another quick word here, humility, a modest or low view of one's own importance. We see this throughout Daniel. When he goes to the chief um, leader there about food. Hey, can I not eat the king's food? We see when he goes and he knows what the interpretation of these dreams are. He could take on power. He can do all these things, but instead he humbles himself and he says, this is the message. You see here, I'm gonna go into the lion's den, but I'm gonna have humility. I'm gonna go before. I, I was not a very humble person growing up. In high school, um, I was a jock, the bully, the one who could ma manipulate people. I was a God. I was my own God. I, like Darius, was my own God. But thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, showing me mercy and grace that God wants to show upon all of us, wherever we are. There was another situation. Um, it's interesting when you talk about humility, you're like, okay, how was, <laughs> I don't want to be humbled this week, right? But looking back, I had another situation at work where I was demoted because um, I wasn't focused on the job. And it took me five years to go back and apologize to the person who had demoted me. Don't let it be five years. Humble yourself when things happen and you're like, I'm not that important. God is the one that is our measuring stick. Help us to be that way. Don't wait that long. Obedience. Not only was Daniel humble, he was obedient. 
he followed God's commands, right? The first commandment. Do not have any other gods. He didn't let Darius become his God. He was obedient. He didn't compromise, right? As we're surviving exile, obedience is better than compromise. Every day, we have opportunity to compromise. Driving to Randy's Donuts. I'll use Tim's example. Driving here, going to work, looking on your screen, looking at your TV, talking to your friends, talking to your neighbors. How do we compromise our beliefs instead of standing on God's commands? And we do that first in humility. We can go to God's word and see how we can obey it better. And then the last thing, prayer. Prayer. I think this story about Daniel being in the lion's den and he prayed three times, this is I think sometimes it might be overlooked a little bit, but what did he do? He prayed three times a day. It's, it's, if we look at Psalm 55, 17, it says, every morning and noon, I cry out in distress, distress, and he hears my voice. Psalm 55, 17, every morning, or evening, morning, and noon, I'm sorry. I said every morning, evening, morning, in noon, I cry out distress. Do we cry out in distress evening, morning, and noon? Do we set our hearts towards God as Daniel set his heart towards Jerusalem, got on his knees and said, God, I need your help. I need your help. I can't do this. I can't be my own God. I can't do it. I need your help to get through this. I was thinking... Um, I'll do something a little different because I can. About, I want us to think about somebody right now, each of us individually, of somebody that we can be praying for. Who is that person that's in this difficult situation that seems like, I don't know what's going to happen, and I can be praying for them? Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you, that you need to submit before God and say, God, I can't do this. I need your help. I need my prayer life to be committed to you because you're there with me. You're there beside me. You hear my prayers. You're available to me 365, 24-7. And instead of, as somebody told me, a vending machine, I want this, I want that, I want that, that he's available to us. I'm going to give us 30 seconds. I'm going to give you, can we take a moment, close our eyes for just a minute. Who is a person that God has put on your heart today that you could be praying for? As we're praying, I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will use, this pers- use you in this person's life. That you may be the person who brings comfort reconciliation, peace, the peace of knowing God, even in the hardest situations. Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you that we can come before your throne even during a service that we may be praying and asking for your will upon our lives, for you to show mercy and grace upon us, for us to humble ourselves, to be obedient and to pray to you. All right, we're going to keep moving. In verse 19, it says, God, I'm going to just say the, the notes say, God enters into all situations to remind us he is faithful. Then at the break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of the lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually be able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. Remember that line? My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. 
Let's go down to 24. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions. They, their children, and their wives, and before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. So here we can see God delivers Daniel in this difficult situation. God is faithful. Psalm 33, 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Let's be reminded that he is faithful. Let's also be reminded that God is the God of judgment. He is the one, right? And you can see what happens to these guys. They're thrown into the lion's den, and before they even hit the ground, they're broken to pieces. Let's see what God does in the king's renewed plan. I'm just going to touch on a few of these verses because it's Darius says, wow, right? He comes out and he tur- his heart turns. God can change the heart of people towards him. I think about some of my family members when I first became a Christian and rejected it, but yet I kept praying for them. I kept saying, God, enter into this space. Enter into me that I can be a witness for you. And what does Darius do? He says some great things here. He says, for he is the living God enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. His dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders. He who saved Daniel from the power of the lions. This living God enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. He delivers and rescues. He's delivered us and rescued us from darkness. He has come to set the captives free. So what do we do with this? We're going to jump to 1 Peter 2.21. We're going to see how this example of Daniel is fulfilled perfectly in Jesus. We can see how Jesus, what did he do? Starting in 21. So it says, for this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you leaving an example so that you may follow his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For all of us were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. What do we see here? He prayed continually. Jesus prayed in the garden. He was there praying on behalf of us. He suffered. We will suffer. God doesn't say that we won't face trials and tribulations. We will suffer. He had an excellent spirit, just like Daniel, Jesus had the excellent spirit, right? He was humble. He was obedient to the point of death. He didn't threaten anyone. He trusted God. They found him blameless. This simple message of the cross. This simple message that Jesus came, he died, and he rose again for the sins of us all. We can look to Daniel as an example, but... Jesus is the measuring stick by which I want to commit my love, life, no matter what. No matter what. Three things, humility, obedience, and prayer in every difficult situation. No matter what, obedience is better than compromise, and God is waiting to hear from us when we come to him in prayer. Let us pray together. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit, that excellent spirit that came upon Daniel and lives in us. Help us to come humbly to you, Lord, when we need help, knowing that you are the giver of all things, that you hear us, you're beside us, Help us to be obedient to your word, Lord. Help us not to look to the people around us, but to look to your word and see the commands that you've given us 
and help us to pray to you, God. Help us to be people of prayer. Help this church, Lord, be a place of prayer that people will be known here by the prayers that they pray to you, God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thanks for watching this message online. And here's our hope that you didn't just hear the word of God, but that it compels you to follow the way of Jesus. Here's what we mean by that. We're not just giving you information, but we believe that there's steps that you take afterwards to obey Jesus, to serve the world around you, to give sacrificially, and to go to others who haven't heard the message. And so one, we would love to know you, particularly if you're in the Southern California area. If you go to kingsharbor.org slash hello, you can send us a digital connect card, and we would love to follow up with you, just get to know you better. We also hope that you didn't just hear a message and then just stow it away somewhere, but it compels you to obey and follow the way of Jesus. Uh, we pray that you do that in community. That's the best way to live this out. You can live it out. We just don't believe you should live it out alone. Uh, on top of that, we, we believe that this is an opportunity to serve. And whether that's you serving uh, the church or the community around you, that those who follow Jesus reflect Jesus by the way that they serve. And then we would ask that you give. Giving is not something that is uh, just kind of a tradition in the church. It's evidence that you fully trust Jesus in every dimension of your life. And then finally, we're praying that you go, that you would share this with someone else, that if the Lord has impacted you by his word to see Jesus better and love him more deeply, that you'd invite others to do the same by either sharing this message with them or entering into community with them and sharing what the Lord has done. So we're excited to hear from you, to connect with you, and to hear about what the Lord's doing through his word and in your life.